A Kansas school funding deal now just needs the governor's signature. It will affect every single Kansas school district, classroom, and taxpayer. Amy Holly is back from Kansas City, Kansas with those details. Well, what the new money deal means is $126 million more for Kansas school districts, but Kansas kids will likely see very little change. Each each whole pie. Third grade teacher Peter Wetzel says he'd like a bigger piece of the financial pie, too. For years, he's been shelling out about 100 bucks a month just to pay for basic materials in his classroom. A room, by the way, that's not so high on the teacher's list. Well, some people call it Siberia. The annex, uh, the place where most people don't want to go to. The kids are lovable, but they're learning in a not so lovable space. They're learning here in a cramped mobile unit outside of the school. Found out you could staple to the walls, and that was enough to get me to be that brave one to step up and say, oh, you know, I'll, I think I'll bite the bullet for the team. The team at Frank Rushton Elementary School grew last year, and more kids means more teachers and staff have also been pushed out to these makeshift offices in the hallway and here. It's a kindergarten closet. A closet that's now a teacher leader's office. Sometimes they'll even have a group of students in here working. Kansas City, Kansas hopes it will be able to use some of the $2.5 million extra it will get from the state for additional classrooms or even some schools. We grew 750 kids this year. That's a, almost two school buildings, which we don't have. So we, we really desperately need that additional money. Richer districts like Blue Valley, though, in Johnson County won't get that kind of cash, but will be able to tax their profit property owners more. Still, the deal did nothing to increase per pupil funding. The state will still only pay about $14 more a child next year. And that's the big struggle for us. We still are have, you know, dealing with the effects of five years of cuts, and we're nowhere near either where we used to be or where the courts have said we should be. So the deal addressed the wealth gaps between rich and poor districts, not the money each school receives for each student. So students will likely see very few changes in the classroom, but property tax owners will. So poor districts will have to use most of that money to lower property taxes for schools. And in richer districts, taxpayers could end up paying more at the discretion of the districts entirely. It is too early, though, to tell which districts will decide to do just that. Amy Holly, 41 Action News. So lawyers for parents and districts at the center of the school funding issue say the approved plan has very little new money for schools. Attorney John Robb says taking money from youth programs and changing property tax provisions will widen the gap between rich and poor districts. So far, the plan has not reached Governor Sam Brownback's desk. Lawmakers have 10 days to send it.